an annoying tank rattle, a fueling issue, or maybe a reserve light which never goes off. It might be time to take a look inside your tank. Stripping down and reassembling tank components might seem frightening, but I'm going to show you how easy it really is. After opening the fueling cap and removing the torque screws, you can lift out the filler cap and its rubber ring seal. This gives you access to the torque screws holding the filler tube and pulling this out reveals the EVAP vapor shutoff valve and weighted pendulum, which if you're experiencing a rattle, could be the source of your problems. You can now see the EVAP breather and overflow drains. The EVAP vapor shutoff valve remains open when your bike is in the upright position, enabling the pressure caused by the gas vapor in your tank to be released into your EVAP system's charcoal canister. So now is the chance to check that it's moving freely and that the drain holes and hoses are not obstructed. The underside of the filler tube incorporates the sealed drainage hoses, which channel any vapour and or liquid fuel to the appropriate drain hoses. It's important to note that the filler cap rubber seal fits with the smooth side facing up when viewed from the installed position. Flipping the tank over exposes the most important part of the fuel tank, that being the fuel pump. The fuel pump is secured by 6 M5 20 bolts, which can easily be removed with a ratchet using an 8mm socket and an optional extension, preferably one longer than I'm using here. A longer extension will help clear the sides of the tank. Once you've loosened the bolts, you can easily remove them by hand, with the assistance of the 8mm socket. With the bolts removed, you can simply lift off the pump retaining ring. Taking a close look, you will notice that one side is smooth and the other has indentations. Also, there is a tab cut out on one side. This is important to remember during reinstallation. Although, it is hard to get the installation wrong, as the screw hole pattern is asymmetrical, ensuring you will install it correctly. Be careful when removing the fuel pump, as there is another component in your tank which connects to it, and that is your fuel reserve level. As you gently lift out the pump, you will notice a blue electrical wire and connector. This needs to be unclipped and then carefully released from the pump, taking care not to damage the top mounted resistor. If you are having difficulty pulling the connector with your fingers without pulling on the resistor, try using a pair of needle nose pliers to grip and pull only on the released connector. Now you can remove the pump from the tank to more easily inspect the condition of the fuel line connectors and the external fuel strainer for holes or any required cleaning or replacement. Although electrical connections are well protected inside the gas tank, it is well recommended to check them for any signs of less than ideal condition or loose connections, which may cause intermittent issues like voltage drop. On 2016 and older R9Ts, the electronic controller is located externally, so both the seal and the unit can also be visually checked at this time. To test the operation of the pump, you can connect it using two insulated alligator jumper wires and then connect it to a 12 volt battery. Finally, check the pump sealing ring condition. There is only one thing left in the tank to remove for inspection and that's your fuel reserve level sensor. This little green plastic cylinder can easily be unclipped without any tools by hand. If you are experiencing issues with your fuel reserve light being on even with the tank full of gas, then it is worth cleaning the wiring terminals and also testing. Once these components have been inspected and items needing cleaning or replacing have been attended to, it is time to reverse the procedure, taking care to ensure all the parts are fitted in the exact order and position as they were found during assembly, and taking special care to ensure that we haven't got any leaks. All the bolts should be pinched down firmly, but there is no need to use specific torque settings. In the case of the seal, you can optionally add some form of non-curing sealant compatible with paint to help keep the water from entering the tank cap housing. Once you've installed the screws and the fuel cap is secured in place, you can flip the tank over and reinstall the existing or replacement fuel reserve level sensor. If you're having trouble reinstalling the fuel reserve level sensor, you are likely attempting to install it upside down. Make sure the white part is facing the top of the tank. Give the fuel pump seal a good share of sealant grease ensuring an even distribution all the way around and locate the female connector for the fuel reserve level sensor to be reconnected. Reconnect the sensor ensuring that it is fully plugged in and that the tab is locked in place. Place the fuel pump back into the tank aligning the tab on the fuel pump with the two dot sized indentations. 
Double check you have aligned the tab correctly if you are having difficulties reinstalling the pump. Check that the rubber seal shows all the way around the pump before installing the retaining ring. Locate the tab cut out of the retaining ring. This must also align with the fuel pump tab. Aligning the tabs will ensure that all the screws align with their corresponding mating threads. Remember to install the retaining ring with the smooth side facing you. Reinstall all six of the screws just very loosely to start with to allow for easy movement of the retaining ring while aligning the screws. It is important that the screws are torqued down to six newton meters. So first ensure they are finger tight and then apply the required torque to each screw in a crisscross starlight pattern. This ensures that the seal is evenly compressed against the tank mating surface. Put enough fuel in the bike to test for any leaks, leave for 12 hours, then check if any fuel has escaped. If not, then reinstall your tank but leave unmounted. Turn on your bike so it can pressurise the tank and check if there is any fuel escaping. Then bolt down your tank and then for extra safety check a few times during the next couple of short rides around your neighbourhood that there's no fuel leakage. See how easily you can do that yourself? But what other potential problems should you look out for? I'll explain a few common ones in this video right here.